This is my first time at this conference, so I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit um, about virtual reality. And just to introduce myself, I'm in front of I'm assistant professor of business here at National Business University. So I, I'm used to these rooms. So I've been <laughs> here quite a bit. And um, I teach a number of business courses, so primarily blended. Um, we do have online courses as well. Um, so today, in the 20 minutes that we have, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on what interested me or got me started with virtual reality. Tell you a little bit about what virtual reality is, why you want to use virtual reality. And then hopefully have a demonstration. Now I want to give a disclaimer. Um, also, this is an interactive session. So I'm going to be asking questions. I'm also going to ask you to do some things. So if you've got your smartphone, you take it out. If you've got your computer, you take it out because we're going to be using that as well. Um, also, if we have time, and I may uh, cut it, give us about five, five or five minutes for some questions. So, what got me interested in virtual reality? Well, it's actually this gentleman here. His name is Scott Showalter. Scott Showalter has nothing to do with virtual reality, but he's piqued my interest. Now, Scott Showalter is an accounting professor. I met him at a, actually it was a conference like this for accounting professors, American Accounting Association. He gave a presentation on how he used a video game called Second Life. Uh, anybody heard of Second Life? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. What is what is Second Life? Second Life is a multi-user virtual environment. I don't think this was used in minutes. So yeah, so yeah, it's it's an awesome way to communicate to um, immerse yourself in different environments, to experience things, to create any world that you want it to become whether it is just for fun or for vacation, I mean, a lot of times the what is the experience is not necessarily just about the awesome stuff you learn, so very cool. It, it is. It is. <laughs> I guess so. It's also a way of making a pile of money. You just said it's a way of what? Making a pile of money. Okay. So when I was at Dartmouth, we had Second Life made of Hanover, New Hampshire. So people would, it's a game, but they'd buy property. And so the people who made a lot of money, the smartest students actually bought the piece of property between property and then built on it like a 40 story building with this tiny little town. So people had to pay them to buy that piece. Oh, they would wow. stop them from renting their environment. It's a free way of making money. Yes, but I don't know the people who designed in there, they're making like $60,000 a year designing the photos of people's avatars. Real world money. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, not not to rain on Scott, but he yes. wasn't doing anything that glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually he he changed the game around so students can they go in a warehouse and then they audit inventory. So that so what he did they they actually practice auditing functions. So he gamified. They call it gamification. So he gamified it, and I saw this, and I was just like, wow, this is great. I was like, wow, there's got to be a way where I can get my students actually to be inside of the warehouse. So that sparked me to start learning about virtual reality. So I came back home, just went on Amazon, started buying books, bought a virtual reality camera, everything I could get on virtual reality. <laughs> you know, and then, yeah. And, and started making videos and things, and I was talking to my mentor. My mentor was like, you know, why don't you call up some of these CEOs from local companies and talk to them about it? And also, um, why don't you see about going into manufacturing companies and videotaping? Which one of those options do you think works? You think that, uh, Manufacturing companies want to be in their video oh, no, no, no. That one didn't work. Yeah. That was a that was a dead end. But I was able
able to speak with a number of local CEOs for virtual reality companies. One in particular really took me under his wing, taught me the ins and outs of the business, how it works, how to film. He actually looked at a lot of the things that I was doing and critiqued them. So that was it, it pushed me light years uh, in as far as virtual reality. Now, what is virtual reality? Virtual reality is a computer generated environment. So it can either be completely man-made, so from photos or videos, or it can be from computer generated uh, items, CG as they call it. Now, I've got this chart, so I wanna ask you this question. And be but before we get in, we see the baby boomers, we see Gen X, we see millennials. What's the next one after millennials? Gen Z. Gen Z. So I was at another university, I gave a, uh, this presentation, I pulled this slide up to the students and asked them what they thought about each one. And you know, I realized everybody in the room was a Gen Z, right? So they were like, oh, I'm a millennial. But. <laughs> <laughs> They're calling them millennials. Yeah, you know, we gotta think about it, that Gen Z, millennials are actually getting older. Think about it. <laughs> it's kind of scary, right? So I wanted to ask you, when you think about technology, when you think about baby boomers, what comes to mind when you think about the use of technology? Oh, oh, oh I was yeah. just gonna say they need their grand children to help them. Right, they're afraid of it. Their phone. Yeah, they're yeah. afraid of it. And they don't they don't want to learn it. They're just I can do it this way. I don't need to learn that.
research shows, so you kind of skipped ahead of the slide, but no, that's good. <laughs> so the research shows that you're right, the older generations are more tech savvy with, um, let's say, computer applications that deal with productivity, deal with work. So like you said, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Excel. So that, so that is true. Even with research, I'm a grad student and I have some in my cohort who are what, millennials? I, I would I, I guess they are, they're much younger. And they're and it's even after class is over, I get a message from somebody saying, Where do we look up this information? I'm just like, just Google it. <laughs> 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 you know, it's so true. Yeah. 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 As a millennial. <laughs> So no one even taught us, they, it was a time where technology was growing so much that people assumed that we knew it, you know. Um, people before us, they would learn it, and people after us, like, they know it. And we're that, millennials, that they feel that it, we, we were living in that time when it was happening, of course we must know. Um, and so I feel like a lot of us didn't actually keep up with that. We were still learning an old process as well, and trying to assimilate into the learning and so, yeah, I do agree that there's a lot of us, that, uh, no, not being included, I know I said a good word, but um, a lot of people that don't know because they were expected to know it and no one actually taught them because you were busy doing it. Right. Yeah, I would go off of that because millennial is yeah. well born in 90, and um, oftentimes I find myself not knowing as much as I am expected to know in terms of technology. And then also going back into like, well, I don't need to know it. Somebody after me knows how to do this better than I do. So I just need to focus on what I know how to do well and utilize my resources yeah. better. But I get into that, that set of, I know I'm supposed to know this, but I don't know it. And now I'm afraid and nervous yeah. and don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm Oh, I would, but there's a difference too between them understanding the apps on their phone and then using a computer. So I think that that's also part of it, that they're very savvy when it comes to promoting themselves, the Instagram and all that, they can handle that. But you know, when, when it's something that they have, like, again, there's sort of that, that breaking point where they're like, all right, if it's on a phone, I know everything to do. But once you take that phone away from them, then it's a different type of technology and they still sometimes don't understand how to approach it properly and to use it for what it is. So I, I see that's a difference. I mean, they still are familiar with it, the digital natives in a certain way to their phone, but when it comes to actually like work day applications or things like that, that seems to be the crossover. So it's not, it's not working very well. Yeah, I just wanted to add this technology, when you ask technology, I don't always think about it as digital, right? Because I've been part of that just right at the end of the baby phase and where we went from analog so I don't, I use digital applications all the time. Right. And um, it's assumed I don't know for the millennial right. generation, right? right? But I do. Right. So because we had, we had to migrate through that right. change, which is a lot different. And so I, I kind of feel like every generation has its struggles to maneuver through technology. Gotcha. gotcha. That's my feeling.
really quick, I'm kind of just pushing ahead out of respect for, for your time. So I want to ask you this question really quick. What are the websites that are the top um, peak time users of the internet?
questions while I'm trying to think of questions. So for your experience of going to Mount Rushmore, have you ever been there in reality? No, I've been there. So you can't go under two hours in reality. That's right. <laughs> but but virtually you can, and you kind of they have a, a, a seating area where you can kind of sit and stand and look at Mount Rushmore. So you can kind of jump between the two. I got virtually. in my name. 